Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about X-Men Season 2. Now, as big of a hit as Season 1 was, the network wanted some changes to be done for Season 2. One was not making, like, an entire season arc the way they did with Season 1. I guess they liked the X-Men, but were not into as crazy continuity-heavy X-Men really is. I mean, if you want to complain about that with Marvel, I feel like X-Men itself is a million times worse about that but <laughs> um it's like the most marvel thing uh comics wise they also uh wanted to bring back morph because he was considered one of the most popular characters when they tested kids um so i think in a lot of ways i don't like this season as much as season one in fact i like season one and season three have always been my two big seasons and this is sort of like this weird thing in the middle that doesn't have as much of an arc. It sort of tries to. It's a valiant attempt, but it, um, and it, this season does have good episodes. I don't hate this season or anything, but it does feel like one and three are kind of the seasons. And uh, two is sort of this weird thing that got sandwiched in between them. I think some of that is because the network and uh, Haim Saban would not let them do that anymore. And so they had to sort of come up with ways to, you know, because part of X-Men is the continuity if you're gonna have a cartoon show. And there are certain people who have arcs throughout the season, despite that, particularly the Friends of Humanity, who I think they they basically call them Proud Boys at one point. I think they call them you Glad Boys. Beast calls them something. I'm like, you basically just call them Proud Boys. I mean, they are. Friends of Humanity is pretty much, <laughs> is a hate group. But that's, that's, that's the point of those characters. And they do push that farther than it was like, I am watching this concurrently with x-men 97 season one coming out and i was like wait did i remember that wrong did they did they really just do that in the 90s on saturday morning like i mean it's x-men so you have to confront those issues but um they have that whole arc going on they have the mr sinister thing the friends of humanity stuff i actually really like and i find that to be a really interesting idea is like there would be a hate group or like you know how you have the ku klux klan or you have the Proud Boys, you'd have, you'd have the Friends of Humanity. Like, that sounds like... And I think uh, Creed does have, like, he even says... I think he says in one part, like, you know, oh, we don't use those terms, you know, in the, with the public, which is something the clan actually did. So I, I found that to be, like, I was like, wow, this really, like, went there. That arc was really great and actually probably one of the better parts of season two. I'm glad they've, like, come back and even in X-Men 97. Um, Mr. Sinister, however is sort of the big weak link for this because it, when I saw this I was really happy because I was reading comics and I knew who he was and I was in elementary school that's sort of all I needed um you know that <laughs> I was happy so I think they did their job in that case but I do think he comes off it doesn't really work as well because I think it's like he's part like guy who's into eugenics part like like, I'm so evil, I'm so sinister, Mr. Sinister. And you're like, I, don't, I guess, dude. I don't know. It, it's like, doesn't play as well when your big bad last time is, you know, the hatred towards mutants and how far that hatred could end up actually just destroying humanity with the Sentinels and, like, all of the ideas of how hated the mutants are. And Mr. Sinister's like, what if you guys had a kid or something and then they'd be a really good mutant? And you're like, I guess. I don't what like it just didn't <laughs> it doesn't really play he's always playing as like a mustache twirling kind of villain in this so i just didn't i mean I, I i i do like him as a character i grew up liking him i'm I'm sort of like not sure why i liked him other than he was neat i guess um and this season didn't really change my mind it's just like why was he so involved in all this stuff it just feels like he was like i'm so evil and you're like i i don't know there there seemed to be more at play with his pure genetic stuff in 97 and in this it's like he wants the purity of mutants but it seems like just like this weird thing that like he's into but he's more into being a silly villain like i feel like apocalypse works because you're like this guy's insane and he like wants his four horsemen and stuff but mr sinister it's like well he has these villains he has this obsession over scott and gene but also is really into the savage land and also interested in messing with professor x and like the gen it just doesn't really 
work as well and i just you know i i i grew up with mr sinister and i I, you know i had his action figure and all that stuff but i just didn't think didn't work as well and the savage land thing i think which is the thing that connected them which i think eric leewald i'm not sure i want to read the um book again i use this as a resource apparently other people would write the, the scripts of the episodes and there'd always be a part where it's a leave space for savage land thing so um he wrote them all and they were produced like sort of separately so they could just go in and fox wouldn't mind the little continuity i do th- at the time i sort of liked it and i was reading like mountains of as many x-men comics as i could get my hands on and i sort of like that stuff but now i just feel like it's like just feels like like all oh, right we're still doing this they're still lost in the savage land we're still we're still there all right okay and it does sort of like they end up finding him but i didn't understand like what the purpose was it just felt like you know saturday morning superhero team fights bad guy and took their uh head guy away and if they had played with that more like you know x-187 does in particular like the idea of professor x being gone which i think the comics did really well i don't think the show did a very good job at that at all and i think one of the reasons like this season is very into episodes about various x-men in fact i think other than the two parters that open the show the middle one about time travel which name i'll get too soon and mojo vision so that's like seven i guess that's not as much oh okay i guess majority is not that but that's like about half the season is every character gets there an episode except for scott gene and jubilee like the first storm one which when it aired i remember had a dedication to jack kirby i noticed that hasn't come back on disney plus i think that would be cool because it came out as i recall i didn't look up when jack kirby died it was the one that aired pretty soon after he died say how to sell like dedication i i didn't see that on streaming i think Honestly, I think they should put that back. What's the big deal? I've watched sitcoms when they have dedications to people, and I'm like, I do, who's this electrician? Like, I have no clue. I feel like Jack Kirby, you know, like, to me, it's part of the episode, but I guess to most people, it's not. I like that Storm episode, but some of them, in particular, the Omega Red episode and the Gambit episode are particularly bad. Um, the Gambit one with the Tide stuff, like, I, I've heard so many people make fun of, but the Colossus one the mega red like the outlines are so thick like even people who like thick outlines would be like i don't think you should trim this down a bit and like all of 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 piotr's russian voice my wife why am i mental like all this stuff that just didn't i didn't think i didn't think it really worked and it came off as very like preachy and i i found a little much at times uh, whereas you have you have like Repo Man, uh, which is written, which is about Wolverine's uh, backstory with Weapon X and everything. That's actually written by Len Wein, who created Wolverine and wrote uh, the first of the end two part in Savage Land, and continues can, will continue to be a writer on the show, which is kind of cool to have the creator of Wolverine explain the backstory of Wolverine. I don't know, it seems cool. I would say the one two parter that I really like, and I think is probably. To, to me the best uh the best of this season and it kind of isn't really part of this season almost it feels like sort of uh sort of an offshoot because it doesn't have to do with the friends of, i guess it does have to do with the friends of humanity and sinister man this probably is a better culmination of the whole thing than the actual end of the season but um uh time fugitives which first uh you know we see cable and his time and like these time tornadoes are like ripping everything and changing everything he has to go back when bishop went back and all this stuff happened um and it's really interesting because you get part one and you see bishop go back in time and then part two cable also goes back in time uh but he goes back in time to like basically the same episode as bishop and so you'll see the same shots you just watched but a little different and cables there or someone saying something different or use a different take well at the same time recycling animation apparently they did uh recycle a lot to save money but i will say with time fugitives um you know i've seen things like back to future 2 or other movies where they try to insert people into like scenes you've already seen and those are fine i've not seen done in animation in such a way and it came flawlessly because they made them back to back and they could reuse stuff and just like have a context change in a scene or have you know it cuts to someone and someone else says the line to the other one it was really 
smart actually like i definitely could tell they reused footage but they kept changing stuff and like obviously they could just put a character into another shot very easily which they did but um they did a very good job i, I really like i think time fugitives is absolutely my favorite of this season and i think it does a great job of you know having fun with time travel in particular particularly like cable going into scenes that previously he wasn't and showing scenes through different perspectives and different shots and inserting people um, I, I really like Time Fugitives a lot. It's probably it's probably some of the best of the show, but it's definitely I'd say the best of this entire season. After that, it, like I think the show picks up after Time Fugitives because like um, I I don't know I like the Wolverine episode Repo Man. It's okay. Externally yours is the Gamma one. I don't really like the Omega Ren one. I don't really like. But then when you get into ones about Rogue, like the Rogue's Hail explaining Rhodes, the origin of Rogue's powers, we get the origin of, we get a romance with Beast that has to do with the Friends of Humanity that's really good and explains, kind of exposes the Friends of Humanity. Th that little run is good. Um, I, do, I, I wish there had been more episodes of the X-Men together, and it seems like the, the ones I like that aren't really Savage Lands ones are the Time Fugitives and Mojo Vision. And that's the team working together. It's like, I want to see the X-Men. I don't want to see Rogue Solo Adventure and Storm Solo Adventure, Gambit Solo Adventure, <laughs> and like Beast Solo Adventure. I just want to see them together. And I really didn't get a lot of that this season uh, as much as I would have liked. The end episode, the end part, two parts is uh, Reunion. Len Wein wrote the first one, which is a lot of setup. But then we get like Kazar shows up in this, which that's kind of neat. And you get a lot of Mr. Sinister stuff and they're fighting their way out and stuff like that. That one's a little better. I kind of like the two parts that open and close it. But the season just doesn't mean as much. It doesn't feel like the network would let it do that. Supposedly the writers were considering making Jean pregnant and you slowly see her progress throughout the season. But they just didn't feel like that would appeal to little boys. So they didn't do it. And apparently when this kid born he was like kind of have double mutancy or something like that he's gonna be like a double mutant because he's Scott and Jean's kid which is uh which is weird I'm glad they cut it <laughs> just sounds strange uh I I do like season two to a point but I don't think it means as much and it doesn't feel like it's the stakes are his race he's just like this crazy weird evil guy and couldn't they just like not deal with him I don't know uh Having Morph back was interesting, but he's been alive since I first saw season two kick off. So to me, it's like not as crazy as it may be um, like having him just permanently dead or something. But I, uh, I I quite liked him and their search for him. And there's certain things I like about this season, but I think overall uh, that Fox and Saban were kind of like hindering it in such a way. Um, of course, this is the kind of season you're going to end up going because it's quantity over quality. And like the Gambit one, which I think Gambit's backstory had just been explained. Or the Omega Red one and stuff like that. If you're into the X-Men cartoon show, I think this is like, you know, they didn't expect to have another season. They did. And then they got the huge order that sort of closed out the show. But this is like kind of like, okay, we're basking our glory. We want to do this. The network's like, no, we want to do that. And he does mention that there's more executives that get involved as X-Men becomes more successful. Which um, I think uh, stinks. But I'm still excited to see Dark Phoenix. Uh, next I think this is a okay season that's kind of them trying to figure out how to tell the story without being as structured over a season arc all of it they do have certain things like the friends of humanity like Mr. Sinister but it just doesn't play the same it doesn't feel as direct having all those things um I uh you know my big recommendation would be Time Fugitives um Mojo Vision's fun and stuff like that. But I would say Time Futures is great. Um, but yeah, it's like sort of just uneven. It's like Friends of Humanity is cool. Um, certain people's backstories, like Rogue is really great. Be Being the Beast with Beast. But then others, it's like, do we need Wolverine to go after Omega Ren and meet Alpha Flight? Like that just seems like a lot of things. I like season two to a point, but I think it just sort of has too many problems. And it's sort of hindered by its success because all its management wanted to be this one thing when in actuality they should have celebrated what it was and let them have a full kind of season like that maybe it wasn't in them maybe they want to expose ideas and have a transitional point to get to season three i think they did what they could to bring us season two of x-men but um there's too many i think dangling like weird plot elements exploring things and stuff like that it i think it works out for later seasons the ground you built here is just like not fun watching anyone build ground 
uh, it's more fun seeing things blossom and what is coming out in this is like just overall not as maybe just not as impactful it just this just feels like a superhero team fighting uh you know a big villain and stuff like that the only one that doesn't feel like that is more time fugitive just because it's so fascinating and i'm messing with the idea of it and recycling footage but also being cheap but also using that to their advantage in a lot of ways i think this season had a lot of potential and a lot riding on it it continued to be successful um i'm i, I do feel like a, dip, a pretty big dip in quality but hearing all the behind the scenes stuff it feels like they sort of presented the best thing they could and probably wanted to do it a lot different maybe it wouldn't have been good had they done it i don't know but what i saw was uh a show that was trying to sort of acknowledge and play as many characters as possible and not exactly sure why just to do it because hey everyone should have their shot and i guess they did but it's not fun watching a bunch of people line up to perform for you it's more fun to have that performance mean something and i think x-men season two uh doesn't mean as much it just means that it's cool to watch them fight stuff and it's interesting to learn about these characters but um there's not necessarily much there isn't the meaning behind it of why they're the team and stuff and uh other than you know time she is which is awesome but you know it's just i think a fairly okay season that could have been a lot better and had the potential to be sort of feels a bit second season out the gate but i think it all sort of comes back with the next one i guess we'll have to wait till now uh but when looking at this i'm just sort of going to think about time fugitives and I guess move on because I don't know if every X-Men needs a story. But I think uh, I'm hoping this is more of a setup for the next one, even if it does feel like they sort of had to write their way into something. And maybe that's something they wrote their, themselves into isn't ultimately that interesting, but uh, good for them. This was just a very odd off season, unfortunately, but I'm excited to see the third one since the third one. I have a lot of pleasant memories for maybe not as many with this but it was fun to watch time fugitives and mojo vision and then just a lot of other stuff that kind of fails to really land because it doesn't necessarily have the real meaning which is i think what makes x-men who they are this sort of miss the point of who x-men uh, fully are while trying to do it the best they could through this network so if you have seen X-Men Season 2 and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.